This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this lecture, we're going to look at chapter four of the free lecture notes for paper P2, which, as you can see, is called Life Cycle Costing. Now, before we get into the, life, into the actual costing, uh, let me explain what we mean by uh, the life cycle of a product. Uh, that most products we're not going to carry on selling forever. You know, we, we invent a new product, we develop a new product. Um, hopefully it does well, and for a period we get high sales. But inevitably, with most products, there comes a time when something new is invented and takes over, uh, and sales fall. You know, think of the old-style TVs, the, the deep ones, cathode ray tubes. Uh, they used to be the only TVs you could buy, you know, the companies were making big profits from them. But then, flat screen TVs appear, and everybody switches to flat screen. Um, the old style TVs, sales drop enormously, I doubt anybody buys them anymore, and as a result, very little revenue or even stop manufacturing them. And we say there are... Um, <coughs> Uh, five phases to the product life cycle, which are on the second page. The development phase, when you're developing, designing this new product. Introduction phase, when it goes on sale. Uh, but initially, it, you know, it takes time for people to be aware of it and uh, to start demanding it. Um, we've probably got high advertising costs. The growth phase, that's when sales really start to take off. Uh, but then ultimately we reach maturity, where you know there's a limit to how many we're going to be selling. Um, uh, we stop having the growth, and then a decline phase. The new TVs invented, sales of this existing product uh, start to fall, uh, and eventually perhaps we stop competing. And that's illustrated in an illustrative graph on the next page there. reasonably neatly. But if we look over time, you know, the life cycle, maybe several years, maybe five years, maybe ten years, anything. But um, we have this development phase, first of all, development, uh, followed by the introduction phase, followed by the growth phase, followed by maturity, followed by decline, and as far as sales are concerned, of course, during the development phase, we're not selling any at all. Um, during the introduction phase, we start, to, we start to earn revenue, but it's in the growth phase that the revenue really takes off. But then we get to the maturity phase when the growth stops, but we're selling good numbers. But then, uh, ultimately, another product takes over. And we decline, we lose sales, and perhaps ultimately it goes down to zero. So that's the sort of way revenue is going to go for sales over time. Um, as far as the profits are concerned, the profits, well, during the development phase, we've got the cost of developing, we're not earning anything. So during that phase, we're going to be losing money. During the intra introductory phase, well, we're still likely to have high costs, perhaps due to advertising. The revenues aren't that great, but perhaps it does start to turn into a profit. The growth phase is when we really do start making our profit. And as we're selling more and more, perhaps we get economies of scale, the cost per unit falls, more profit still. The maturity phase is when we are really profitable. But then, of course, during the decline phase, well, unless we decide to just pull the plug and stop everything, then the risk is we end up actually making losses. So not very pretty there. It's a bit prettier the way it's printed in the notes. But that's basically what's happening. And that happens with not all products, obviously. It happens with so many products. And the point about life cycle costing is 
All right, we want to make profits, obviously, but if we were just looking at short-term profits, we'd have to do anything, because most products are likely to lose money in the early years. You know, even if we discount the development costs, you know, it's worth having development costs if you're going to make profits. But even during the interim phase, we like to be losing money. And if we if we made decisions based on short term, how much profit we'll make next year, um, then we're never going to do any new products. Or if we based our selling prices on short term costs, you know, forget the development for the minute, even in the intro phase. We say, oh, we've all these costs of advertising, we need to charge a high price to make a profit. Well, of course, the danger is you charge a high price. Nobody's ever going to buy them. You're never going to get any growth. And so, surely, on something like this, we should recognise there is a life cycle. And if something's going to be profitable over its whole life, be it five years, ten years, if these TVs are going to make us big profits overall, then it's worth making losses in the short term to make the big profits later. And when we're fixing selling prices, we should take into account the fact that, all right, be prepared to make a loss initially, um, but get the sales and we'll make the profits later. Uh, and the actual costing, we'll do a proper example in a minute, but it's actually very straightforward, very common sense. That the life cycle cost of a product in paragraph four will try and estimate the total cost that will be involved over the entire life. The cost of designing, the cost of advertising, the cost obviously of production, uh, the cost at the end if we have to pay to remove the machines and things, dispose of equipment. But we take all the costs over the life, divide by the total production we expect over the life. And that gives us a life cycle cost. But again, we're looking at the whole life of it. We're not looking just at the early years. Um, use the five phases of the product life cycle to suggest typical costs of the life to be incurred at each stage. Well, I have had I've already done that. Uh, the development phase, um, the design costs, market research, that sort of thing. The introductory phase, you'll have launch costs, uh, especially, obviously, advertising, uh, perhaps buying new machines and things. The growth phase, still advertising, um, selling and distribution. The maturity phase, primarily, and in the growth phase, in fact, the uh, production costs. But then, uh, you know, all these other costs coming in, like um, guarantee work, that sort of thing. Uh, the decline phase, well, still got production costs and things, but ultimately the cost of cleaning up, uh, dismantling machines, that sort of thing. Over the page, let's look at an example. Uh, a company's planning a new product. Um, market research suggests that demand for the product would last for five years and at a selling price of $10.50 a unit, we expect to sell 2,000 units in the first year and 12,000 units in each of the other four years. So it kept it relatively simple here, but you know, the introductory phase, only 2,000 units at the beginning and then 12,000 a year. Uh, the lifetime costs, we've got manufacturing costs estimated at $6 a unit. Design and development costs of 60000 And end of life costs of 30. End of life costs, I mentioned before, perhaps it does cost money to uh, dismantle machines, to clean up pollution maybe. But their costs incurred at the end of the, uh, whatever it was, five years. It says in the life cycle cost per unit. Well, how many units uh, are we producing over the entire life? Over the entire life, it says 2,000 units in the first year. And then for each of the remaining four, it'll be 12,000 units. So a total of 50,000 units. Uh, what are the total costs 
we're expecting to incur over the life. I've got the um, design and development costs, which will be incurred at the very beginning, of sixty thousand. Uh, we have we've got production costs, manufacturing costs. It's fifty thousand units over the life at a cost of six dollars a unit, a total of three hundred. And we've got end of life costs. All right, we'll only pay these at the end of the five years, but that's going to cost us thirty. So over the entire life of the product, um, we expect it's going to cost us 390000 And therefore, overall, what's the cost per unit? The life cycle cost per unit. 390000 in total for 50,000 units, which comes to 539 Seven dollar eighty per unit. Uh, is it worthwhile producing? Well, we think the selling price is ten dollar fifty, and so yes, it is overall. Now it may not be in the uh, early years. The early years were only selling two, first year we're only selling two thousand. We've got all those design costs. Maybe usually loss making. But over the entire life, it is going to be profitable. So it's the life cycle cost which surely would be a better basis for determining the selling price. There are other factors we'll take into account. There's a chapter later on pricing. But in terms of wanting to sell for more than cost, uh, it makes more sense to do it over the entire life cycle. Um, so that's all it is. Total cost divided by uh, total production. Um, no five, just a bit of chat, maximizing revenue over the life cycle. Design costs out of products, that relates to what we're talking about with target costing. Uh, that while we're doing the design, see, uh, look for ways of reducing the production cost. We know it's going to be six dollars, look for ways of reducing it. Uh, minimise the time to market. Um, when I drew the little uh, picture, you know, at the very beginning, you've got quite a period, in general, of development. Well, the shorter that period, the sooner we can start selling, the sooner we can actually start reporting profits. Uh, Minimise break-even time. Uh, well, again, the faster we can get it onto market, the more we can shorten the actual introductory period and get the growth period, the sooner we can start uh, breaking even. Uh, Maximise um, the life cycle, uh, the, 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 the lifespan, uh, having common sense. The longer you can keep the product selling, uh, the better it's going to be. Uh, the benefits. I think I've already spoken about it. Uh, I, I, I guess I don't know if I've read that list, but it's really just typing out the sort of things I've been saying. Uh, but finally, in uh, paragraph seven, you'll see customer life cycle. Although generally with life cycle costing, we are looking at the products. We want the product to be have as long a life cycle as possible and so on. But a similar thing, I can with customers. Look at exercise three. Explain why a customer may not be profitable to a business in the early stages of a relationship. do not say they won't be profitable, they might not be. It's because surely it's quite common, is it not? If you can get a new big customer, you might offer them big discounts initially. Uh, you might have devoted a lot more time to that customer. Uh, in keeping them happy and visiting them, and you know, it costs money. Look back to the chapter we had on um, customer profitability, the activity based chapter. So, in the early stages, it's quite common to get a new big customer to be prepared or to accept the fact that you might actually be losing money. Uh, but why? Because in later years, you know, once they become a good customer, perhaps they'll start buying more and more, we become more profitable. 
perhaps we need to devote less attention to them. Uh, it's a bit like the products. It may be worth losing money on a customer at the beginning, but it's going to be a long-term relationship when in the future we, um, we're going to be profitable. Suggest uh, methods we could use to lengthen the period of time we spend in the profitable phase. Just like with products, the longer we can keep them going, the better. Uh, how do you retain customers? You retain them by giving them a good service. Better service to get, the more chance they'll stay with you rather than going elsewhere. Um, things like, oh, I'm sure you may have seen this in supermarkets, but some sort of loyalty bonus, loyalty discount. Uh, extra rewards for being a good customer. Uh, introducing extra services. Make them feel that they're getting um, a better deal as time goes by. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's leave that chapter there.